I was thinking, I was thinking more of like, if, if it was uh, Chris or Melissa or Melissa and Sheriff or well, Sergeant. Or anything. That's exactly what I was thinking as well. All of those options. <laughs> I think our kids would get dizzy. Yeah. <laughs> no, I think I think I think that's great. I think I, it, it, that they would be as literally uh, they, it, that they would be as accepting and and, and as understanding. I don't. <laughs> <laughs> and, and and as encouraging and supportive as we are. I'm done. Next question. <laughs> Tonight I'll be the hunter. Ooh. I'll give you 20 minutes to stop that. <laughs> oh, we didn't need a lot more than 20 minutes. <laughs> stop, stop. Hello. Nurse? Right. Good morning. <laughs> were so drastically different, even though they were both raised under Gerard. Oh, yes. I think... Yeah. <laughs> I'm still... <laughs> of all the reasons why we need a nurse. <laughs> uh, I think that, you know, our women... Our women are... <laughs> Raised differently. Uh, the women, are, yeah. Well, our, our women yeah. are raised to be um, non-Canadian. Right. <laughs> are raised to be the leaders, and you know the men are raised to be the warriors, right? Is it that way? No. Yeah. No, it's that way. Yeah. Our women are the leaders. They make the. the... And I think that. Uh, wow, that's <laughs> nothing like every other household in the world. <laughs> um, I don't know. I, I think there. I think there was a competitiveness between the two of us as kids. Probably, I think that there was a a, a, a favoritism. I think that there was things that, that went on. Who was the favorite? Uh, I I think I was. Oh. <laughs> no, I think Kate was. But I think that it didn't bother me as much as it like it was. A, it was. A, it was a you know a father daughter thing. Oh, that's so interesting. You know, like, like daddy's little girl. Meta. I think maybe the leader warrior thing should have been reversed because the women have a better track record of getting things done than the men. No, but, that's, but that's what it. Uh, what do you? But they were. They are the leaders. Yeah, but like usually in this world, the leaders don't do anything. The warriors do. Yeah, I think she. I think she just. You know, I, I think she followed Daddy's tracks. You know what I mean? She followed more Gerard's kind of. Let's just get down and do it. Who cares and dirty and you know, um, you know. I, I, yeah, you know. That there's big differences between you know me and, and my siblings in real life as well. Yeah. But um, yeah, I, I think she just sort of followed Daddy's tracks. I think he was off. And I think she was off. And I think I was more like my mother. Mm. Hope someone asked Created a, question a little about bit that. of backstory there. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Sorry. No worries. <laughs> Hi. Um, so, yeah, I think we've had enough of the shipping. Um, but romantic relationships, your, yeah, sorry, but for now anyway, um, your spouses, most of them are now deceased, uh, sadly, but they've had quite the impact on your character. So you've got the share and, you know, tendency to whiskey, and Chris had to actively help Victoria and her, well, 
curse, I suppose. And you've seen Melissa now at the end of season three, and it's quite obvious that Scott's dad being back in town is doing something to her. So I was wondering your headcanon, so to speak, on how they met and why the relationships turned out the way they did. Uh, for all of us? Yeah, all of you. Good question. Oh, you both looking at me, I have to go first. <laughs> <coughs> I think that uh, we know that the Argents had a great history, a great lineage, um, as being, I think, you know, sort of high up in, you know, chain of, of hunters, and I think that she came from a similar family. So I always sort of felt, and this was always just me, this was, this was me filling in facts, so this didn't, this didn't come from Jeff or anyone else. I always felt like we were two families that were, um, you know, almost like a pair, you know, almost like two of the sort of, um, I think she was a, a great sort of leader and I think I being a great warrior. <laughs> Don't laugh. <laughs> no, it was, it, was, it was an appropriate sort of matching of those two to then breed, you know, a next great warrior or leader. Something that went on in my head. Um, it was a, a very strong partnership, a very strong, um, you know, marriage, a partnership and friendship, and you know, support of one another. That's kind of thought. Does that make sense? Yeah, no, it does. Yeah, sorry. Yeah, absolutely. No, <laughs> um, I've never had a conversation with Jeff Davis um, about the, the the pairing between me and my ex-husband, but I. The, when I think about it, this is just me personally, I believe that you know we were young parents. Um, I believe that, um, that Scott was the most amazing, most loved surprise in our lives. And I think that whatever happened between the two of us, meaning me and the ex, happened fast, and he left fast. And I had to, we, then if it was just me and, and Scott, and we had to deal with it. Very fast. I, I actually I actually know what happened. You do? I do. And, Am I right? Uh, yes, but it was a sort of a thing that then culminated in a thing, and then you, you know, left. But it happened fast. It did. Um, the decision happened fast. Yes, it did. But it had been building, and right. and the Stalinskys and the McCalls were actually friends. You know, because our kids were friends, and this is uh, all new to me. I and we were both in law enforcement, and you know, there was a there's a there's a history there. Um, as far as as my wife and and myself, you know, Stalinsky's wife, um, we I mean, she was she was it. She was she was that, that you know. Yeah. Much like Susan was for you. Yeah, yeah. I mean, Aww. yeah. You, you, you find that one person and that's... And, you know, I think mean, it's, it's, what, six years, eight years ago that, that she died and, and, you know, still wearing a ring and, and really still married. Buddy. Which is, is a good thing and a bad thing. Mm. You know, it's, uh, it's hard. It's hard to move on. It's a very romantic thing, but I suppose that'll be problematic if Melissa enters the picture. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Hi. Hey. Um, just wondering, with how they were working together at the end of season three, does Chris like Isaac more than he likes Scott? <laughs> Not yet, he doesn't. No. No. No, it's going to take some time. You know, as much as we've seen Chris draw alliances with the with the wolves. It, uh, it has always come after some time. It's always come after some, you know, um, <clears throat> not even so much proving. It's just establishing that trust. You know what I mean? I don't think that it, it comes that easily. So no, right now he still has uh, some guards up around that board. Absolutely. And Melissa, if Isaac and Alison become a thing, how will Melissa take it with Isaac kind of being like a second son to her and then with the history between Allison and Scott? Very interesting question. I think that I would probably let um, my son lead me to how to feel about it. And I would probably try to stay out of it as much as possible. Because <laughs> that sounds like a hornet's nest. <laughs> okay, thank you. Thank you. What does a hornet's nest sound like? <laughs> <laughs> 
Hi, my question is for JR. Um, considering like how much Chris insists on following the code, do you sometimes feel like he's a bit of a hypocrite because he tells Kate, "We don't, you're pointing the gun at a 16-year-old child," and the next episode we see him pointing the gun at Scott. <laughs> Why do you think it is that he usually <laughs> insists on following the code so rigorously and then sometimes just turns around and does the opposite thing? Well, I feel like I was pointing a gun <laughs> and Scott might have crossed in front of me. <laughs> it's very technical how it works. <laughs> no, um, I think that, you know, I, I, I think moments like that, <clears throat> I think the big difference, honestly, is that Kate would have shot, and Chris would. You know that when it comes down to it, I think that there is a. And when are you talking about when I came out grocery shopping and I had the gun pointed at him? No. Um, oh, at the two, car when I had the gun pointed at him. Two episodes one, when he like he found Scott and Ellison making out in the car. And on the car. On top of the car. car. Yeah. Oh right. Well, I mean, you know, <laughs> I had every reason to point it at him. Man. He you, was. You, you want me to answer this as a father of two daughters? <laughs> That's it. Well, that's exactly. I mean, all, all truth and, uh, 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 and honesty. That's that is that line that I was talking about for Chris. You know what I mean? Where it's it, the fatherhood and the hunter and the, and the parental. He just happened to have a gun on him. <laughs> you know, if he didn't, he would have pulled the kid off him anyways. And, and, and you know what I mean? He would have yeah. still had that 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 desire. Um, <laughs> Arjun is not a hypocrite. <laughs> it's just, no, there's two, there's two different things, you know, because Kate, like you said, would have shot him. And he was just... Being intimidated. He was showing him his gun collection. <laughs> it's quite extensive. Come on in here, son. <laughs> okay, and here's you. my pickup truck. <laughs> and you see how long that bed in the back is? <laughs> and the shovel. It's six feet long. <laughs> This is a four-wheel drive truck, and I can put a body in the back and cover it up. I can drive in the middle of the desert, and I can bury you, and they'll never find you. Uh, apparently, I talk in my sleep. <laughs> Hi, sorry. Um, I was wondering if you guys could tell us like your funny stories or your best anecdotes from onset. There's a lot of farting. What? <laughs> a lot of oh, God. Not from any of us. What? No, I said if you could tell us your best anecdotes from on the Oh, and? <laughs> That's what I said. There's a lot of farting. <laughs> um, Melissa? I'm thinking. <laughs> I don't, you know, anecdotes, I, I don't know, but uh, Lyndon and I got the giggles the other day, and that yeah, was a lot did. of fun. Because we did. we did this thing where... Uh, <laughs> it's one of those horrible things where you're supposed to be serious and it's like, they, the, the director actually goes, and it's, it's, an, it's an oh shit moment. And, and, we, and, and so we're supposed to like look at each other, I'm supposed to say this, la la la, and then we're supposed to go like this, we're supposed to go... <laughs> but in actuality it was more like this, I la, went, la 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 la. <laughs> <laughs> had a Scooby-Doo moment as right. you my face, and I was like, what just happened? I, I laughed and tried to spit the line out and just ran out of the room. <laughs> and also, I was doing a, um, a scene with, it, that's coming up, I mean, it's already been in, like announced or whatever, um, with Doug Jones, the actor Doug Jones. Um, one lucky girl, let me tell you. And we were doing, like, this, I can't tell you what we were doing, but it was so intense what we were doing. And I'm sitting here like this, and literally, I'm like, I'm, we are just in each other's faces, and my nose starts to run. <laughs> I mean, I've got full-on snot happening. So I had to like, little, you know, dissolve into giggles and be like, I, I apologize and blow my nose. And he was so sweet, he was like, oh honey, it's your close up. <laughs> so it was very kind, very kind. Look for that, Doug Jones, amazing, amazing, amazing. Do, 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 I, I don't know about an anecdote. I do a lot of fun on the set. We, we do. We do. Did you guys see? I think Hacklin showed you, so showed some people on his phone that when they yeah. the prank video when they scared. Yeah. So I tried it. It didn't quite go the same. 
it turned into, and I know I don't have it on my phone because I know that I, I you know how you take some of your stuff off so that your phone gets full. All right, it's not on my phone. But I, I went and hid in the toilet to scare them. And, 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 and what I didn't realize is that they took him to his, to hair makeup to put prosthetics on. So I'm waiting in there. And I'm waiting. And I'm waiting. And I, and I made a first video that was like, I'm, in, I'm, I'm hiding in the toilet to scare him. And he should be here any minute. And, this funny. and then I like, you know, turn it off and then I was like, He's gonna come to the to shoot, and this is gonna be really funny, and I'm gonna jump up and scare him. Like, <laughs> and then I realized, did they take him to the. So then it became, okay, I've been here for three days. I don't think he's coming, but I'm gonna wait it out. And then I just made a series of like, okay, it's been seven days. <laughs> I'm really, really hungry. And, and I was like peeling off my jacket and goes, I'm thirsty, I don't think I can drink the water in here because it's in the trailer, it's not good. Okay, it's been a month. I don't think they're coming. And I just did it serious. And that's when I ended up showing them as the prank because they never did come. They took them to press time. They took them to and then took them to set. And I really was in there for like 10 or 12 minutes making these little self videos. <laughs> that was my prank. <laughs> Do you remember, I guess it was uh, season two?